Well, now that Jerome Powell's most talked about piece of economic data has moved below 3 percent, are better days ahead for the fight against inflation? Our first guest today thinks that rates are still in the driver's seat when it comes to equity returns. George Cipollone, Penn Mutual Asset Management Portfolio Manager, is joining us right now. Hey, George, good to see you. So uh, what are you thinking at this point about whether the Fed has been successful and whether uh, we are going to see inflation come back down and then it able to start to cut rates. Hey, Julie and Josh, great to see you both. So I think the great thing for the Fed right now is, is that PCE has come back so much. And now there's a huge gap between the PCE and the Fed funds rate. And so we can equate that to a relief of pressure and really a lot of room for the Fed to start cutting, which is exactly what they wanted to see. And if we just think back where we were a few months ago, we had the 10 year of 5% financial conditions were tightening and there was a palpable sense of fear that we were gonna go through 5%. Well, those days are over. And fortunately now with inflation pulling back, again, the Fed has room. I think there's about 125 basis points worth of cuts priced in for 2024 coin flip, whether it's gonna be March or May in terms of the start, but they are in a really, really good spot and so far so good for the Fed. What about George? I don't, I don't know if you heard, you know, Julie and I, we were talking about this, and there are some economists, George, who are a bit skeptical. They like what they see in terms of the trajectory of inflation, George, but they're kind of saying, you know what, let's not break out the party balloons just yet, because that last mile, George, they think, to get really back to 2% and stick there, they think it might be a little tougher than maybe some expect. What do you think? I, I think that's a fair point, because if you look at history, it hasn't just been down and done. It usually there are th these uh, bumps back up in inflation. And so I think that's what, what we have to watch out for. Obviously, once the Fed starts to cut, you know, we tend to see the animal spirits get back into the markets. And we are seeing that, especially if you look at the PE for, of the S&P overall of 40 percent over the last few, you know, few months. And, and, and so that's what you have to watch out for. I like to watch for mainly energy and, and oil prices. Gasoline's a big a big number that I tend to watch. And if you see a bump up there, then you might start to get worried about inflation working back in. But again, so far, so good. I do agree. I think that last mile is going to be a lot tougher than what we've had to overcome so far. And um, and yeah, we'll see. I, I have a feeling we'll be range bound for, for Treasury yields for the rest of the year. That's what it feels like, at least at this point, off of five, you know, maybe a little higher than four. And that's where we are right now. And so what are the implications then for stocks also, George? Sure. So, so lots of implications, obviously. I think one of the things, obviously, everybody looks at the big picture. They all look at the indexes. Underneath the indexes, underneath the big tech names, as, as we are all looking at in amazement, um, we're seeing a lot of weakness throughout. You know, if you look at some small caps, even if you look at some big caps that have reported some surprising results. So on an individual basis, you know, you have to watch out for the 3Ms of the world and the Intels and um, even Humana that reported yesterday, Tesla they were all down about 10%. We don't hear much about that because the broad indexes are still really strong. So, but I love divergences. As, as a bottom-up stock picker, I think that gives us a ton of opportunity to add value. Small caps look cheap, international ADRs look really cheap relative to the US. And so from my standpoint, I really like to see those types of divergences. From a broad stock market index, growth needs to come through. You mentioned the big tech names are gonna report next week. They need to follow through with the growth that they have given us so far. In terms of, of where you're seeing opportunity here, George, just in the, in the domestic equity market, what looks attractive to you and what doesn't? Yeah, so finally, in terms of income, we went through this period that's the zero interest rate policy. There was no income to get almost anywhere. And it was really frustrating. I'm an income investor. We, we invest in the income universe at Penn Mutual. And so what's nice to see now is that there is some yield to get, and, and that's great. And another thing is, again, talking about the divergence, for example, utilities are trading at their lowest point relative to the, to the S&P, maybe in history. They're, they're, they look really cheap. Some financials and banks, you're seeing some decent results, mixed results, I would say, overall in the financial sector. But you're starting to see some value there we, we have for the past six months. So I think, you know, on a bottom up basis, there's really some nice small caps, some nice ADRs that have just kind of been left in dust but have some decent growth potential to them, which is good. George, it has been a kind of a tough slog though, not necessarily in income, but in certainly in value versus oh, growth, yeah. right? So, yes. you know, what's gonna be the catalyst? You, you might be getting yield, but you're not necessarily, you're not getting that price return yet, right? So what do you think is gonna be the catalyst? Is it gonna be 
when rates start to turn more decidedly lower? Yeah, it's a great point, Julie, because as a few investor, it feels like we get beat up almost every day. So you see these these seven to 10 growths. I, th I think in the S&P, 110 of the 124 increase in points was you know a handful of the tech names that we all know so very well. So yeah, it's kind of been easy just to buy the index and just ride it. And value investors have basically been left in the dust. Again, underneath there in, in small caps, I do think if um, if we do see this kind of steady state, this kind of turn off in, of inflation, I do think that'll be a good thing longer term for these names. I do think, again, there's there's only three ways a stock can go up. Either your PE multiple can go up, your sales can go up, or you know your margins can expand. And I think of that three, those three set of factors, I think there's a much better combination of value left in small caps and in ADRs at this point. And I think we'll find those names um, and add some value there. And George, I'll get you out of here on this. You know, as we look across 2024, George, you know, we started by talking about these kind of better economic data we're seeing. I'm just curious, George, what's the big worry for you in 2024? Is it the economy? Is it the Fed? Is it is it geopolitics, George? I'm looking at a, a, a headline here. I ran back Houthis say they just they attacked an oil tanker. What is your big concern as an investor? Yeah, I, I think going again, going back to a few months ago, if we start to see the 10 year go back to that 5% level. Again, you really felt a constricted type of feeling almost in your chest when you're looking at the at the stock and the bond markets. And so given the high levels of debt that we have today, and just look at the government's balance sheet, you know, as, as a great example, I think we're paying record levels of interest expense at, at the moment. So the market, the government, we all need interest rates to kind of settle in here and pull back and just stay at this level. I think the biggest fear would be if interest rates do go back up. And if they do go through five, I think that's a problem. I think the market has proven that it really is going to have a hard time handling a 10 year through 5%. And I think that would be my biggest concern. George, thank you so much for joining the show today, helping us kick off the show. We appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Great. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Julie.